What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of that Rotary Car Guy. If you guys are thinking of getting to Rotaries but don't have the knowledge on how to maintain it, then say no more because in this video, I will show you guys basic tips on how to maintain a Rotary engine. So you've been searching around for a car on Marketplace and you stumbled upon an RX-7 for sale. The car looked pretty decent and it seemed like in good working condition. So you thought maybe it's okay to pick one up even though I don't know much about rotary engines. What could go wrong, right? All you've heard about them is that they're kind of high maintenance car, but you still decided that you wanted to get this car. And so you finally contacted the seller and told him, hey, I want to check out your RX-7. You drove there, he showed you the car, you got to check it out, uh, inspected it. Uh, and he started the car and it started with no issues. For now, that is. You thought to yourself, this is perfect and you were pleased with what you saw. And so you decided that you liked the car and you made the deal, handed the cash and he handed over you the key. Now, as you drove away, you realize something. You realize that you have no clue on how to maintain a rotary engine. But luckily for you, you just know the right person who can guide you. As soon as your local rotary car guy investigates your car, there are four main things he would tell you on how to maintain rotary engines. Oil, premix, spark plugs, and cooling system. Those are the four essential things you need to take care of to keep your rotary engine healthy. Let's go start with oil. So make sure to always, always have oil in your engine. I mean, this goes for any kind of engine, but for a rotary engine, it's it's literally the lifeline of the engine. Like, I, I, I can stress this enough, but always have oil in the engine. So you would strictly follow, not even strictly, but religiously follow changing your oil every 3,000 miles and that's it. Make sure to check your oil level at least two to three times a week, depending on how much you drive the car. But uh, for example, me, I just drive my car every weekend. So I literally just check them like once in a while. But you know, it depends because you know, rotaries, they burn oil. It, it's made to be that way because they have oil being injected into the housing. So that way the apex seals are looped up. Now, some of you guys are gonna be asking what oil weight should I use? You can use 10W30 up to 20W50. Do not ever, please, do not ever use 5W30. And I know a lot of RX-8 people use 5W30 when the RX-8s came over here in the US, but it's really not good to use 5W30 because you might as well put water in that engine and that'll be it for its lubrication. You don't have to use anything like 20W50. Those are for like advanced stuff for racing purposes, but I usually use 1030 and 10W40. I use 1030 when it's like winter and 10W40 during summer. So anything between those is okay, just not 5W30, please. Do I use conventional or full synthetic? Um, there's a big debate about it back then. 
and to tell you the truth you can actually use both of them the only thing is you have to keep using the same thing if it's synthetic you gotta stick with synthetic if you're gonna be using conventional then just keep using conventional there's a whole uh, page of that on racing beat website it explains that if you go from conventional to full synthetic it would do something with the seals they they actually tested all this for their racing uh, rotary cars and you know they were able to use full synthetic with no problem if anything it actually gave them a little bit more maybe like a couple of horsepower on the, the dyno but they were able to prove that it's okay to use full synthetic now if you're going to get your engine rebuilt and they advise that don't use a full synthetic for breaking period because it lubricates the seals really good that it's not gonna give enough friction to actually break in the, uh, the apex seals and the housing. So they advise that you use conventional first and then after the breaking period, you can use full synthetic. But if you just wanna drive your car normal, you know, just like an everyday car, then just stick with conventional. It's just really best, it's less headache. That's what I've been using for God knows how long, it was like since 2006. I never went to full synthetic at all. I just kept using conventional and it's good. It's not giving me any problems. It's just how it is. You can pretty much use any kind of oil. I use Castrol. That's my preferred oil because they are pretty good not leaving engine deposits inside. People have used Pennzoil, Mobile One, really anything. Sometimes if I'm in an emergency, I need to just like get something to fill my oil up for when I'm drifting. I would just get like a regular gas station oil. As long as you have the same weight that you're using, then that's good. Try not to mix any kind of different weight because it's just gonna mess things up a little bit. But if worse comes to worse, then just, you know, I've tried it before. It didn't really do anything to the engine, but I, would I really do that all the time? Like, no, so. Okay, with the oil filter, you can pretty much use anything. A lot of like RX-7 people in the community are recommending that it's best to use the stock Mazda oil filter from Mazda. The reason why is because uh, they have this thing called filter bypass valve. What it does is that the oil filter, they have the filter material and it has that little valve that lets the oil go through so that way it can get to the engine quick enough just to get the engine warm up faster. When that happens, uh, you have oil rushing into the engine during the warm up process. And so with that amount of oil going in the engine, the filter won't be able to keep up. And so the bypass valve will let in the oil, whatever oil needed, just so that way it can get to the engine quick enough. So that's the only purpose of that oil filter bypass valve. Okay, now we're moving to using premix. Using premix on your rotary engine will help prolong the life of the apex seals. The main benefit of using premix is to equally lubricate your apex seals. Oil is being injected in the rotor housing so that way it will lubricate the apex seals and you have this thing called oil metering pump what it does it sucks up oil from the pan and injects it into the rotor housings having oil metering pump is very crucial because it keeps your apex seals lubricated but does it lubricate it evenly not as good as when you're using premix the premix was designed to evenly lubricate the apex seals which then eliminates the need for the oil metering pump because although the OMP is very crucial at the end of the day it's getting oil from the bottom of the pan so you'll have bad oil that's being injected into the rotor housing and not only that the OMP plays a big part with oil consumption and this is one of the main reasons why rotaries are known for burning oil is because it's made to do that it's recommended to delete your OMP once you start using uh, premix. But there are people out there, including me, that still uses their OMP and yet I'm premixing. It's not really recommended, but you can do it. Uh, just don't use too much of it. Put in only half of what you're gonna need. Make sure to use half an ounce per gallon of gas if you have your oil metering pump and you can use a full ounce per gallon if you deleted your OMP. And make sure to check out Mazda Tricks or Atkins Rotary. They have all the measurement bottles that you need for uh, pre-mixing your gas and they're pretty cheap and you know, you'll have a, a little nice kit for that. 
The main four premix that I would recommend you guys using, Renewable Lubricants, Idemitsu, you have Lucas, and Redline. Now, I started with Idemitsu before, and that was great, but uh, since Renewable Lubricants came out and I found out about it, I've been using them pretty much for a couple of years now, and it's been really great. I do believe it's a little bit better than Idemitsu, but as long as you have premix there, it should be good. Do your own research, and uh, if you like Lucas, you have Redline. I've seen people use Redline before, or Lucas. You know, I've used Lucas before, and it's pretty good. It's actually not bad. Alright, so next one is replacing your spark plugs and spark plug wires. When do I change my spark plugs? It really depends on your application. Uh, I've seen people change their spark plugs. If their car is for racing application, they would replace it around 10 to 15,000 miles. But for regular driving, you know, daily driving or rotary cars, I would suggest 20,000 to 35,000 miles, and that should be good. Be sure to replace your spark plug wires when you're replacing spark plugs. It's just best to have all of them replaced at the same time. The only brand you can use for rotary cars would be NGKs. As far as I know, the only spark plug brand out there for rotary cars are NGKs. Pay close attention to the shape of the spark plug. They're a little bit different than your typical spark plugs because the regular uh, spark plugs, you have the electrode sitting on top right here. But if you look closely on a rotary spark plug, the tip part is actually flat and the main electrode is actually inside of that flat part on top of it so pretty much the side electrode those protruding is going to be the flat part of that spark plug i would suggest ngk spark plug wires if you're just daily driving your car but if you're again if you're doing any racing applications they have different brands out there for spark plug wires and the ignition as well if you go to the msd website you can tell that their products are made for a racing application so if you're going for a racing application route make sure to check out msd but if you're just daily driving it then i would suggest just stick with ngk because they're more of a, the OEM side. All right, so we finally got to the cooling system. This is about as crucial as having oil in your engine because rotaries are known for being really hot in the engine bay. And it happens because of the rotary engine, the way it was designed, it creates more heat. So having a really good cooling system will keep your engine's heat regulated. One of the first things you're gonna need to replace when you get your RX-7s or any kind of rotary cars would be your or crappy old radiator. Uh, the top part of the radiator is actually made out of like some sort of plastic and as time goes by they become very brittle just like any other plastic and you know of course they're always dealing with heat on top of that radiator and so what happens is that it becomes brittle it will crack it will start leaking or it will explode on you one minute you're driving, everything's okay, and next thing you know, a cloud of white smoke puffed out of your hood. And that's not a good thing. It's, uh, I've, I've gone through three radiators. After the third one, I went ahead and upgraded to an aluminum radiator. It's one of the best upgrades you can do for your rotary car. Aluminum radiators are godsend because they dissipate heat much better. You know, the whole body is actually made out of aluminum, so there's no more plastic and it can withstand pressure or heat and I guarantee it's not gonna fail on you when you're uh, either driving or racing out there because I never once had overheating issues after I replaced my crappy old radiator to uh, aluminum radiator and uh, I would recommend Koyo Radiator or Mishimoto. I love Koyo Radiators because they're just the best out there. They have everything made for the RX-7, a complete copy of it, so that you don't have to do any kind of fabrication because everything is like OEM, but everything it was made out of like aluminum. So check out Koyo Radiator, or if you want, check out Mishimoto. Either way, it's good as long as aluminum, and you should go with that. Another thing you can replace if you just got yourself you know, a rotary core or RX-7 is thermostat. I would really replace that right away as soon as you get one, along with the, uh, the water pump. You know, so it's good to know that you have new water pump and thermostat when you got your car from somebody else because 
you don't know if they actually replace it or not so it's just being on the safe side about it and you don't need to replace your thermostat for the next 10 years that's what they said on the RX-7 Club forum but uh, if you have overheating issues I would look at either thermostat first or the water pump so if you get those parts right away then it will eliminate all the other problems you'll have later on in the future but you know it's just a little preventative maintenance one more important thing I would advise you guys if you're getting into rotaries do not baby your rotary car because these rotary engines are not made for you to be easy on them. You know, you have to stump on that gas and let it rev as high as it can. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like, you know, always redline it, but like, you know, you have to redline it at least once a day because it's made to do that, okay? That's one of the leading reasons why the RX-8s are crapping out back then on people is because they are babying them and they're not dogging the hell out of them these rotary engines are not your typical engines okay you need to actually dog the hell out of them so treat it like a race car what do you do with the race car you warm them up you dog the hell out of them and that's what you got to do with the rotary engines and the rule of thumb is a red line a day keeps the carbon away and with that you guys just graduated on how to maintain a rotary engine with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe, blah, 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 blah. But really, I want you guys to watch another video. So if you guys wanna learn how to set up your car for drifting, make sure to watch this video or maybe watch another this video. So thank you guys again. I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't ever look at me like that ever a fucking game, dude. Don't ever look at me again.